The Hollywood Reporter has written an article of enabling predators. <laughs>
uh, started ranting and raving, claiming that the Hollywood Reporter and the film itself somehow glamorizes pedophilia. Well, actually, it doesn't appear to do any such thing. Now, I haven't seen the film yet myself. Uh, I'm actually on the fence as to whether or not I want to because uh, it is rather triggering and it is unpleasant. But science fiction actually should make you feel unpleasant because the whole point of science fiction as a genre is to force you, the viewer, to think about technology and our relationship to it in ways that are often very uncomfortable. Literature is ripe with examples of science fiction dealing with artificial intelligence and uh, how our treatment thereof can go horribly wrong. Isaac Asimov, for example, uh, has written his robot series where robots that were programmed to serve humans ultimately turned on them because of the way humans treated them. Likewise, films like The Terminator express how technology, uh, if you come to rely on it too much and trust it to run everything, it can often decide, well, we don't really need humans anymore, especially when they try to shut us down. So yeah, so back in the early to mid 2000s, uh, technology had leapt to the point where sex dolls could go from just being vinyl blow-up variety to hyper-realistic silicone versions with metal skeletons that could service the whims of people who can't get a date and who have a lot of money to burn, because these things apparently are not cheap. While it was only a matter of time before the perverts got involved and made childlike versions to cater to people on the dark web. Well, fast forward about 15 years and now we've got strides in technology that have allowed androids, artificial intelligences made to look like androids, uh, have come a long way and it's only a matter of time before we have androids that can be programmed to serve our needs. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Welcome back. This morning, we are getting a close-up look at the future of robots. Her name, Sophia, and she's like a science fiction movie come to life. We're going to meet her and her little sister in just a moment, but first, a look at how Sophia's become a robot rock star. She's smart. I have my own kind of existence. She's funny. Am I really that creepy? Well, even if I am, get over it. Now, how we treat these creatures, our own creations, is going to be important going into the future because as we struggle with how to employ people who are already desperate to feed themselves and their families and house themselves and their families during a global pandemic, well, what happens when you make those people irrelevant and then you replace them with robots that are designed to look like people, act like people, think like people? Well, if they look, act, and think like people, are they not people? Kind of a lot to drink in, but yeah, just take a minute to digest that because going into the Hollywood Reporter article, and I can't talk today, this is from February 25th, a Berlin hidden gem, underage robotic provocation in the trouble with being born. Now the title itself is kind of clickbaity and kind of lends itself to Left Foot Media's misinterpretation of the subject matter, but the article itself really leaves no room for ambiguity. It's actually describing to you in graphic detail just how disturbing this film is because it's meant to be disturbing. Because the film, directed by Sandra Wallner, an Austrian director in her uh, sophomore debut, told a story of a robot made to look like a 10-year-old girl built to replace the daughter of her creator, who in turn uses her as a replacement daughter and also replacement wife. Yeah, very disturbing subject matter, but it obviously does not glamorize or glorify pedophilia. Just the opposite, it actually appears that the article describes the film in a way that gets you to realize that yeah, this is something that we should be thinking about because it's only a matter of time before we get androids that can function in everyday society. And when that happens, you just know that, again, there are going to be perverts out there making androids designed to cater to our sexual whims. And they're going to take those uh, sex droids to levels that we really do not want to think about, but we kind of have to. Because if that is going to be a thing, then this is something that society needs to address. Especially considering that we are a society that does, yes, glorify and elevate sexual predators to the highest office 
in the world, the United States presidency. So let me go ahead and play you a couple of clips, one from Left Foot Media and uh, another one. Both go into histrionics. I'll give you the most over-the-top uh, examples of uh, their deceptions. But I'm going to let you be the judge. The Hollywood Reporter has written an article about, uh, which in no uncertain terms really does glamorize this film. And, and you'll see what I mean. And what I want to do today is uh, what we should be doing, which is really, I think, protecting and nurturing children and their childhoods, not enabling predators. And it seems to me, reading this article, that Hollywood they haven't learned a thing. Just, what, a day or so ago, less than 24 hours ago, Harvey Weinstein is convicted. You'd think that with that kind of major showcase and expose of what's going on in Hollywood, Jeffrey Epstein, you'd think, with all of that, that there would be a, a more serious reaction from Hollywood and a more serious attempt to actually change the culture that, uh, that imbues that place, the culture that they live out in that place. But when I read articles like this, it's clear that that isn't happening. I'm torn on what upsets me the most about this particular movie. And I am going to show you the trailer without sound, uh, just a little snippet of it, and we're gonna go over this article. It's because the robot in question is played by an actual 10-year-old girl. And we'll get into that. And the reason it upsets me is because it reminded me back of uh, the movie Bastard Out of Carolina. And there were some scenes, this is Jenna, right? And she was about 10, the same age as this other actor uh, in this film. And I, when I watched Bastard Out of Carolina, there were scenes in it where I was like, is that, that seems like that would traumatize that child. All right, so after watching these clips, uh, I have to ask, what the hell are these people smoking? Because one, they haven't actually seen the film, so they have no idea what they're talking about. Two, they're deliberately misinterpreting the Hollywood Reporter article, and I'm actually going to show you the article itself, and here it is. Berlin hidden gem underage robotic provocation in the trouble with being born. Sandra Walner's drama about a 10-year-old android, well actually it's android made to look like a 10-year-old, and her daddy could prove to be one of the festival's most divisive. So let me go ahead and read to you the relevant portions here. Despite a remarkably lifelike appearance, the child, Ellie, is actually an android. Her memories programmed and it doesn't take long to realize that there's something else to her relationship with this very human, very middle-aged man she calls Daddy. Much of the nocturnal activity is only implied, perhaps leading many to question the depths of their own imagination, but there are moments where there's absolutely no doubt as to the rather envelope-pushing direction the film is taking. So, yeah, I mean, the, the Hollywood Reporter article, yeah, I can't talk today, really is not glamorizing pedophilia. It's actually describing how disturbing this film's subject matter really is. It's not glorifying it at all. So I don't know where Left Foot Media and, you know, these other yahoos are getting all this. I guess their opinion is that even discussing the topic is grounds to say that it is somehow glorifying it or encouraging it. Well, no, it isn't. I mean, it's stupid because, first of all, that, that's like saying that teaching kids sex education in school will somehow encourage them to go out and have sex. No, it doesn't. There's no data to support that. It's the same as saying that talking to kids frankly and honestly about drugs and alcohol will somehow encourage them to go ahead and do it. Well, no, it won't, but it will allow people who otherwise would know to make better decisions ultimately make bad ones and get themselves in trouble because they are kept ignorant by this fear of the topic itself. And so you have people like Left Foot Media actually lying to you about a film that the guy hasn't even seen because he is afraid that even talking Talking about the subject of artificial intelligence and pedophilia will somehow encourage people to go out and make uh, child robots to have sex with. I mean, it, it's a stretch, but you know, that's what it is. But here's why it is so important to have this discussion. You've got Joe Biden, a serial sexual predator, an alleged rapist, and a demonstrably proven child molester because we actually have videos of him putting his hands on children in ways that he knows makes them uncomfortable and in at least one instance actually sexually assaults an eight-year-old in 2015 on C-SPAN caught on tape. 
This is a society that we live in, in which people like that rise to such levels of power that they become untouchable by the rule of law. And little girls like the daughter of that senator end up traumatized for life. They are unable to come forward because even though we have visual evidence right before our eyes that I've just shown you in this very video, she won't be believed. People will gaslight her, try to make it seem as though what she experienced isn't what she thought. And the reason that people like Joe Biden get away with this shit is because we don't talk about stuff like this. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about the damage that it does. We don't talk about how wrong it is. And so we are unable to hold degenerates like Joe Biden accountable. Now, I don't know about you, but you know I do not want any daughters of mine to be put in a situation in which they are assaulted and are unable to come forward because we as a society are too immature and infantile and dishonest with ourselves to even hold a discussion about the things that people do to children. If you look at the crusade that Corey Feldman has been waging for many years now to tell his story and the story of other kids who went through similar abuse. Yeah, that, I mean, hell, I mean, we just had a discussion on uh, Midnight's Edge channel about the director of Fan Four Stick having imploded on set because of repressed memories of childhood abuse that he had suffered coming to the surface during therapy at the time that he was filming and how it affected his career. So, yeah, this is stuff that we should be talking about. As unpleasant as it is, as triggering as it might be to people who have suffered this, we have to talk about it because until we do, people like Joe Biden will continue to get to high positions of power where they can continue to abuse little kids and nothing gets done about it. And I don't know about you, but that is the last thing that I want, okay? So people, you need to grow up, stop lying, stop trying to suppress discussion of things that affect all of us because people are being traumatized and they don't need to be and they shouldn't have to be. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear from you. If you like what you've heard and you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. Like this video, share it. If you want to help support the channel, keep the lights on and help us bring you more content, head over to our Patreon or subscribe star page. We can't do this without you. Until next time, this is Michael Wilk for The Wilk Report saying take care. Good night.